All right, YouTube. All right, YouTube. Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Uh, we're talking Auburn football. Go ahead and like the video. Get active in the comment section. Subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Down in the Deep South, college football is king. And on the plains of Auburn, the battle cry is War Eagle. All right, so we've had a little time in between. I actually took a little break from uh, doing some YouTube stuff for a little bit. I uh, just wanted to clear my head. Just wanted to get some stuff together. Want to give a big shout out to all the Auburn fans out there who have been consistently supportive to the channel. Want to give a big War Eagle to all of those Auburn fans out there. Also, Auburn basketball in the midst of a very successful season. And what I've seen is a lot of folks just don't understand how the whole basketball thing, is work, thing works. Um, you got a, a lot of Auburn fans who are looking at basketball in the same trajectory that you look at football, and you just can't do that. Um, a lot of folks are like, well, damn, Auburn lost, and, you know, everything is falling apart, and Bruce Pearl this, and Wendell Green Jr. that. And, yeah, you know, that, that could be a, a plausible thing. But you still have Auburn, a top five basketball team, who is competing in right now what appears to be one of the toughest conferences in college basketball, just like with football. Auburn now sits at the number one team in the SEC. Even Bruce Pearl said, hey, look, you know, you can get in there and you can win a conference championship uh, in the tournament. You can also kind of streamline your way through to a national championship via – the tournament of 64 March Madness, but he's pointed out specifically that to win your conference championship outright regular season is a huge goal to achieve. And I think a lot of the Auburn fans really need to look at it. Okay. Auburn traditionally focuses their viewpoints and their energies as fans on Auburn football. And is a lot that comes with that. And what comes with that is, you know, you go through a 12-game season. There are not a lot of wins. There are not a lot of losses to go around. You can't really have any costly losses, especially in your sub-conference, your, your division. And your season could could derail from there. Because um, even last year, you had a lot of teams that were really good that were 8-5, and 9-4. and four. But in basketball, it's just a little bit different. Basketball, what you want to look at as a fan, if you're going to, you know, Bruce Pearl has conditioned Auburn fans to now the basketball team is relevant. The basketball team has the opportunity to win championships year in and year out, beginning to attract some of the better talent in the country. Past few years, you've had guys leave early, even after one year and go into the first round of the draft. So. Now, if you're going to be a basketball fan that's not bitching and complaining every night, especially when, you know, Auburn loses, you got to look at it like this. Number one, you got to look at the conference standings. You got to look at where Auburn sits, sits conference standing wise. And you also have to look at what when they start to place teams in the tournament, the national tournament seeds and things like that, they look at. The overall record, they look at your conference record. Then they look at the losses in certain quadrants. Like, did you lose to a team that was good, basically? Or did you lose to teams that were bad? How bad did you lose to those teams? Because if you notice, Auburn only fell down to number five. I think that's a huge accomplishment in their right. And they could still probably finish, depending on what happens up top, could probably still finish in the top three. I don't see number one in this gig, but I do see like a top, top three, top, you know, maybe, maybe number four or something around that line, but you just got to educate yourself in how to be a legitimate basketball fan and looking at basketball from a football perspective, you're probably going to be a miserable soul. All right. So let's get into the meat of this video. Auburn is about to start spring practice did themselves a little bit of due diligence, especially at the quarterback position. Got Robbie Oxford from 
Oregon, former Hoover High School football player, Zach Calzada, out of a, a market that Auburn really likes to tap into is that Gwinnett County market, especially having some of their better put one of their better players in recent history, Derek Brown from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Also, Holden Grenier, who, it, I, you know, in looking at Holden Grenier's film, he's he's pretty good. I wouldn't say exceptionally elite, but a very good, good quarterback, a very serviceable quarterback um, for what Auburn plans to do, especially in that quarterback room. And then, of course, you have Demetrius Davis, who is a really good athlete, a little undersized, but a very competitive athlete out of North Shore High School in Houston, Texas. Now, before we get into the quarterback position, what I really want to talk about is Ike Hilliard. Ike Hilliard is the new wide receivers coach. And many of you know Ike Hilliard from his tenure at Florida as a wide receiver, a very good wide receiver. Because when I saw the, when this came across my desk, I was like, Ike Hilliard, Ike Hilliard. Where the heck do I remember? Oh, I do. I know now. Very elite wide receiver. Had a eight, nine, ten year career in the NFL. So he may know a few things. One of the takeaways that we want to get out of this is, will Ike Hilliard upgrade the wide receiver position at Auburn? We know that that has been a position that has been a struggle for the Tigers, has not caused any calamity. For opposing defensive coordinators. Hell, the leading receiver hasn't cracked a thousand yards in a long time. If Auburn is going to compete, if Auburn is going to win these razor thin situations, wide receiver play has to be key. One coach in college football that is even as great as he is has had to change his trajectory and how he sees things and how he sees the college football game going and how he's going to compete. He upgraded the wide receiver position, and that is Nick Saban. Nick Saban has upgraded that wide receiver position to where his wide receivers are absolutely scary. Amari Cooper, um, you know, Henry Ruggs, all of those guys have revolutionized Alabama to the point that they are now to where instead of Alabama beating you, say, 34 to 10 and, you know, they kind of grind it out, they kind of beat you up. Now they're throwing the football vertically downfield. And they're attracting quarterbacks that are coming, elite quarterbacks that are coming to Alabama because they can have great stats because of this particular situation and having a really good running back and a relatively talented offensive line. They're putting all the pieces together to put themselves in position to win national championships pretty much every year, or at least at worst. And I'm telling you, at worst, a college football playoff appearance. I hear what you want to get out of this is you want to start to attract elite wide receivers, game-breaking wide receivers, not the possession receivers that you probably have right now. Uh, The wide receiver position is probably one of the most focal points of this spring football Training is to see who's going to break out as an elite receiver. If you don't have an elite receiver or two in the SEC conference, you're going to, you know, kind of backslide yourself. And when you have guys like Ike Hilliard, who has experience coaching in the NFL. Now, see, with the NFL, you work with what you got. You know, you draft players. They come to your team. You don't have to do a lot of recruiting. You work with what you got. My question is. Can his coaching ability, which I'm pretty sure is great, can he position himself as an elite recruiter? I think that's going to be the name of the game because you've had several guys that have expressed interest and even signed some paperwork to come to Auburn. And one of the main reasons that they didn't want to retain themselves as coordinators or position coaches are because of the recruiting factor. That's something that we really want to look at is will Ike Hilliard develop himself to be an elite recruiter? 
Cody Burns, for example, didn't particularly do a horrible job. He had some pretty good receivers during his tenure, which is probably why he is a wide receiver, receivers coach at the New Orleans Saints right now. Now, of course, you had some other detractors. You had some uh, iffy quarterback play. You had some iffy offensive line play. But you look at guys like Darius Slayton, great wide receivers that are doing really well in the NFL right now, but just didn't have that elite statistical performance in college. I want to see what Ike Hilliard is going to do. We're going to do some more videos on the quarterback position. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and tap into it, do a little teaser real quick. I really like uh, uh, Ashford. I really like the quarterback that Auburn has garnished from Oregon. He's very talented. He's very calm under pressure. He runs when he needs to. He has a unique running ability. Definitely not a Nick Marshall. Definitely not a Cam Newton, but could be the guy that you want to look for in this quarterback battle. But we're going to break that down a little bit more later on. All right, guys, this is Kennard Vernon Stewart once again for the podcast Talking Auburn Football. Go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Also get active in the comment section. Also leave in the comment section what you want to talk about on the next video. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger. War Eagle. <laughs>